Hi folks, welcome to lesson one, Organic Chemistry with Priestland Science. We're gonna use the same lesson format as usual, so if you need to pause the video at any time to collect your resources, you can. We're gonna start with some retrieval practice. This is a B1 health and infection, so pause and retrieve. And these are the answers, so you can pause and revise. This is C1 atomic structure, so pause and retrieve. And here are the answers, so you can pause and revise. Finally, we have C1 bonding and atomic structure, so you can pause and retrieve. And the answers to that question are here, so you can pause and revise. Okay, today we're looking at the chemical composition of crude oil. Uh, this is a picture of some crude oil, and it's made from what we call a mixture of hydrocarbons. Now, these are hydrocarbons. You can see they're made from carbon, and then the little white particles there, which are not labeled, are hydrogens. So crude oil is made from a huge variety of these hydrocarbons, and it was formed millions of years ago from uh, sea creatures. You can see I've labeled them there. What happened over the course of time, those sea creatures died and uh, formed a layer on the bottom of the ocean. You can see sat on top of that layer is a layer of sand and silt. Now, over the course of time, that sand and silt and rock layer got bigger and bigger, pushed down. Uh, on that layer of animal and plant remains, created a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and that turned uh, the remains of animal and plants into crude oil um, and natural gas. Now, as human beings, we have discovered that is incredibly useful. So we drill for it. This is an oil rig, which would send a line down and drill into the crust of the earth take out the crude oil and ship it to places like this. This is a refinery, this is actually Forley. And Forley is charged with the responsibility of uh, separating the mixture of crude oil and then starting the processing for making some very useful resources. And you can see here some very useful resources. Um, so that's, that's our introduction to this unit really we're going to sort of move through this process from start to finish uh, on show my homework uh, today i have placed uh, a few documents if you've not printed from show my homework then i suggest you start to write these questions down into your book or on some lined paper so you can pause the video here and you probably want to pause the video here as well to get this table down Okay, so here we are um, looking at the chemical composition of crude oil today. Before we start that, I thought we'd just recap um, its uses. So our first question says, currently crude oil is a very important resource for humans. State five uses. And five uses that I just showed you within uh, the, the PowerPoint there uh, were these. So, they were dyes, uh, fabrics, fuels, plastics, and medicines. And there's lots more, but those are, those are five important ones. So it's an incredibly useful resource. Uh, starting material for, for lots of lots of different things that we use. Now it says here what's the original source of crude oil? Now strangely it's dead sea animals from hundreds of millions of years ago and then it says crude oil is a finite resource explain what this means I'm going to write finite means it will run out. 
So essentially, as human beings, we're using it uh, at a faster rate at which it can be produced. So it's going to run out at some point, which we know. So question four says, describe the chemical composition of crude oil. And I've already told you this, it's a mixture. of hydrocarbons, lots of different length hydrocarbons. Uh, what is a hydrocarbon? Compound containing hydrogen and carbon only. Um, the only is an important word there. So it's hydrogen and carbon only. And then an introduction to saturated hydrocarbons. It's what is a saturated hydrocarbon? Uh, it's a hydrocarbon. With carbon to carbon single bonds only. Well, there's two types of bonds which we had a look at in retrieval practice. There's single bonds and double bonds and uh, saturated hydrocarbons have these single bonds. And then the question says what is an alkane? And an alkane is another name for a saturated hydrocarbon. So they contain carbon to carbon single bonds only. Okay, so now we're gonna have a look at these alkanes. Now it says here, name the first five alkanes and draw their structural displayed formula. And I'll show you what that means. Now the first five alkanes are called methane, which you've probably heard of. Then we've got ethane, propane, butane, and pentane. So methane, ethane, propane, butane, and pentane. And the first part of these words, what we call the prefix, is incredibly important because it tells us the number of carbon atoms. So meth has one carbon, it's the first one. So I'm gonna draw this quite small. So there's the carbon. And carbon has uh, four electrons in its outer shell. So it can make four bonds. So I'm gonna put what look like four little arms coming off it. And each of those arms, bonds it will bond with is a hydrogen because they remember they are hydrocarbons hydrogen and carbon only so that is the structure or structural formula of methane and its chemical formula is very easy it's one carbon and four hydrogens simple enough now the prefix eth for ethane tells us it has two carbons. So I'm gonna do carbon, another carbon, and a single bond. And I know it's a single bond because it's an alkane, ethane. It tells me it's got a carbon to carbon single bond. And then we know that every carbon can make four bonds. Well, they're making one already. So this one's got another three, and this one has another three. And then we populate it with the hydrogens because it's a hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon only. And that is the structural formula of ethane. Its chemical formula, C2, two carbons, count the hydrogens, H6. Propane, uh, the prefix prop, means three carbons, one, two, three. I've already put the single bonds in because it's an alkane. Every carbon makes four bonds. Careful on the middle one, it's already uh, making two bonds, so it's got 
another two here. And then this one's got three bonds on the outside. And then we just pop the hydrogens on because it's a hydrocarbon. And then count the carbons, C3, count the hydrogens, H8. Uh, butane, you'll probably do this on your own now, I suspect. But means four, uh, one, two, three, four. Probably don't have to look. And pent, when we get to pent, like pentagon, we've got five carbons. Okay, so those are the first five alkanes. Now, some of you might have already noticed a, assuming a pattern uh, in this column here, in, the, in this chemical formula com column, and it relates to question number nine. It says, give the general formula for alkanes. And the general formula for alkanes is this, is C, N, H, 2n plus 2 cn h2n plus 2 and what that essentially means is what whatever the number of carbons uh, an, an alkane has if you want to know the number of hydrogens you double it which is 2n and you add 2 and you can check that here so if i've got two carbons to know the number of hydrogens i just double that number add 2 so 2 times 2 is four, add two is six. Three times two is six, add two is eight. So if you double the carbons, add two, you get the hydrogens that we call the general formula, which is quite useful because if we are ever asked, which you will be asked in a moment, if a hydrocarbon has 20 carbons, how many hydrogens does it have? Well, you just double 20. And add two and you know the number of hydrogens so you're going to use that in a second however before we do that i've been through quite a lot of new information here and what's the most important thing now is once you've got it written down is that you pause the video and just do a little bit of retrieval practice on your own uh, either just cover it up and rewrite the answers for yourself or hand your piece of paper to someone else and get them to test you but Three to five minutes on that um, is going to be perfect for the next task. So pause the video now and do your retrieval practice. Okay, now that you have completed your retrieval practice, I want you to go have a little go at these practice questions. So pause the video and try these questions. And the answers to questions one and two are here. Uh, if you look at number two, all we are doing is applying the general formula for alkanes. And the answers to question three to five are here. These questions are a little bit more challenging. Um, uh, they link to other topics, but I'd like you to have a go at them. So please pause the video and have a go. And the answers to the questions start here. So this is questions one and two. You can pause and check your answers. And then question four is a bit more challenging. But if you pause it and read it through, 
Now it builds on a previous unit that we did on quantitative chemistry, where we studied moles. And the maths is fairly simple once you read it through. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you for the second lesson tomorrow.